Okay, folks, then I go through a little example of shooting, a simple one. Uh, here's our situation so far. You can see the Falchum Jaeger medium machine gun holding the position here in the front of the bridge behind this barricade. They got cover on the flanks as well. There's some shrubs and whatnot. Uh, they do have hard cover for being on the bridge as well as this uh, barricade counts as hard cover. So they're, they're pretty much dug in there. It's pretty good. <clears throat> anyway, I got a little smoke tuft in front of them to show that they defensive fired earlier during this turn. Uh, primarily against this jeep uh, attempting to spot them coming down the road. Well, the jeep survived. Uh, as a result of that, this tank also moved up and took some shots at the Falschenbeagers over here on the bridge. Ineffective. You can see all the damage going on. Uh, so far, the medium machine guns are doing all right. However, Americans are not done. Over here, they have two squads, an LMG squad and a rifle squad with a bazooka back here, by the way. Uh, lined up and in effective range of this medium machine gun. Now they can open up and um, what has to be done now is the Americans have to activate these two units as a combat group, uh, which he's going to do. So he basically declares these two units will activate as a combat group and he needs a 7 plus on 2d6 to activate them. And it's always a 7 plus. Uh, and of course he got himself a nice juicy 9, which means they can activate. Do whatever he wants with them now. So anyways, one of the orders available to him is fire. That's basically to just hold position and open up on a target that they can see and that is within range. And that is that medium machine gun. There's no other targets around really. Um, the closest opponent is this medium machine gun. Uh, double check the range here for the light machine gun. We can see it's it's at about 10 and for the rifle it's a little less than 10. So it's definitely effective range for both teams uh, or squads opening up on them. And what that means, there'll be no modifier for range. Uh, I can tell you right off the bat also, there will be a minus two to hit for both of those units uh, because this unit does have cover. And that line of sight passes through this wall down here. So they're gonna have cover, hard cover. And that's gonna amount to a minus two. Now I'll show you some of the modifiers here just to give you some idea. Here's a listing on the play sheet of all the various weapons and ranges they have, and we're at effective. Like for instance, here's the rifle section. Zero to four is close, and then we've got four to 12 is effective, and they have no long range. And there, so that's that. LMG is right underneath it, that's down here, in a similar situation. Up to four is close, four to 14 is effective range. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you know what category they're at. And effective range has no penalty when you shoot. Close range would give you a plus two. Uh, down below that, we have a list of modifiers, which are used by vehicles and anything that's shooting. They go through these nine modifiers. And the last one is for defensive fire, so that one will be ignored. Uh, but there's a look at them. For example, if the firing unit is elite or militia, they're going to get a plus one if they're elite or a minus one if they're militia. Where are we there? There we are, so you can see that. And so on and so forth. Now in this case, here's the one for target in cover. Hard cover. And we'll see that that is a minus two right there. Uh, so yeah, we know what the modifiers are. It's going to be a total of minus two. Now to hit anything, you're going to need at least a six. And it's the same for all units in the game. So six or more and they need to roll 2d6 and they have a minus two. So let's see if they can do that. Now they're shooting as a group uh, so they're gonna roll one uh, once for both units and they got a seven. Uh, they need at least a six. Now the hard cover would take this down to five uh, which would be no effect so they wouldn't actually hit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that to something more useful here. You guys didn't see that. I didn't do that. But anyway, yeah, the roll was a 10. Now we minus two from that, and that'll be an eight. So with an eight and needing at least a six, they are going to hit. Now, the results you get is important because this will be used to determine the results. The higher you roll, the better, the more effective it is. So one other thing to look at here will be the number of stands. Uh, each stand represents when you're trying to figure out how much damage something does. And what I mean 
is that, well, you'd think that one rifle squad counts as one rifle squad, and it does. One stand equals one stand for resolving the effect. Uh, light machine guns, to reflect their more devastating firepower, increased firepower rate, uh, count as two stands when you're resolving the effect of a hit. So, in other words, these two units firing together will add what they uh, what, what they represent, in this case two for the LMG, one for the rifle, total them, it's three. So they'll count as three stands when you're resolving the effect of the hits. Uh, they hit, so they're going to count as three stands instead of two. That's how that works. So our result was eight. We go to our effects chart, which is somewhere here. There it is. Let me get the right chart out. You can see what I'm talking about here. What you do is you look up the number of stands they re that's being represented here in terms of results, which is three stands, or three sections, it's called squads, however you want to say it. And you reference it with the die that was rolled to hit. In this case, it was eight. So if we look at that result, we get a disengage times one plus a suppression times one. Now these are names of tests to figure out what happens to the target. So there's a disengage test and there's a suppression test that have to be distributed to the targets. Now, when you shoot, uh, you can sh the first target you choose, it's called the main target. Uh, that's the first one that takes the effect. So that first main target would take the disengage test. Any further targets, and it's any target unit within four inches of the main one, uh, can also be hit. They would be distributed, uh, whatever results follow this. And for in, in this case, everything is on the medium machine gun. There is no other squads in four inches of him. So he would have to make both tests in this case, a disengage and a suppression test. That's pretty deadly. So let's take the test and see what happens to these Germans. The first thing we want the German medium machine gun to do is to take their disengage test. And again, if we look at the charts here, we'll look that up. Disengage test is right here. Uh, they're going to roll their dice for the test, apply any modifiers. There's not many. They're all at the top here. Like if they're uh, elite, they get a plus one. Uh, if they're militia, they get a minus one. Uh, and then just reference the result. So we're going to do a disengage test first. And cross reference it with the result. There's uh, no modifiers here. Now, the Fallschirmjäger are veterans, but there's no modifier for that. Uh, so let's see what happens. The higher the better. They get a six. So let's look and see what a six gives us on this little morale test. Uh, six is located right here, five to seven, and we reference that with the type of test. Disengage test. The result is disengage. All right, so the effects of this have to be applied immediately. Now let's go back to our situation here on the bridge. This unit, to disengage, has to fall back away from the enemy. Uh, can't move closer, but it has to fall back six inches away from the enemy. Now, it doesn't have to if it's already in cover, uh, but it has to fall back at least one inch. So we're going to do that. We're going to pull him back off the bridge. Well, he's going to stay on the bridge. I'm going to pull him back from the barricades at least an inch because I do have cover. So we're going to put him right there. And he would be considered suppressed. I'll give him a little marker here, if I can find one, show that he is now suppressed. Now, he still has to take another test. He has to make a suppression test now, if you remember. So let's go to the dice tray here and make that roll. And it's done the same way. Higher the better. Ooh, nice 10. And let's go see what the results of that morale test are. Again, same thing. There's no modifiers. 10 plus under suppression test, that's the first row here, is obey orders. Okay, so they're cool. That fire there didn't really hurt them that much. So there you go. They disengaged. In this case, because they're in cover, they just fell back a little bit. Uh, if there was no cover, uh, they could fall back just far enough to get in that cover within six inches. If there's no cover at all, they have to fall back the full six inches. That's how that works. So there you go, folks. That's an example. And this, these two units up here would now have been activated, and they're, they're done for the turn. So that's that.